Hey everybody, um, thank you so much for having watched my last, um, my first tutorial on how to apply false lashes. Um, today I am going to do a tutorial on just beautiful natural makeup that I simply wear every day, but it's something that a lot of brides like as well because it's not too much, but still a little bit more glamorous than um, most people's everyday looks. So we're gonna get started. The first thing I use is a paint pot by MAC. This is technically a cream eyeshadow, but I love to use it as a primer. The color um, in this is soft ochre, which is a great color for people with um, yellow undertones. And whenever I'm using this on a client, clearly I'm going to be using a brush. I'm not gonna have my fingers all up in their face. But when I'm doing this on myself, I actually prefer to use my fingers just because it seems like the warmth of my hands just kind of helps warm up the product and get it to glide on a little bit better on my eyes. So, just real quick, you, this does not have to be perfect, this part, it's gonna be covered up anyways. Um, and the role of this is just to help everything stay on all night and it helps keep um, eyeshadow from creasing. So it's a really worthwhile product to have. Um, I went recently um, to Ulta and purchased this NYX, or NYX, whatever you want to call it, palette. This is Love in Paris. Um, I did this because my cousin Shannon is getting married shortly and needed a few tips on makeup application, but didn't really want to spend a fortune on makeup she may or may not ever wear again. Um, typically, I use MAC products because that's who I used to work for. Um, but I have found that NYX is a really, really good product, especially for the money. I mean, this was $10, and then at Ulta they always have, you know, buy one, get one half off, and then $3.50 off of a $10 purchase. So all in all, it's a great value. Blow it off a little bit. Okay, so we're going to start with our highlight color. Unfortunately, these are not named, so you'll, if you have this palette, you're just going to have to remember which ones I used or go back and watch this video again. Um, for the highlight color, I really like this one. It's just a nice cream. It's not too shimmery, so you're not going to go around looking like a disco ball. Um, and we're just going to place it here using a flat brush. This is a MAC brush. Um, and you're just going to deposit the color. You don't want to try to blend too much at this point. Um, you're just going to deposit it. So you're just tapping it on there, patting it on there. Let's do the other eye. I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible, but y'all know me. For those of you who really know me, you know I'm kind of wordy. So I will try not to keep it too long. Okay, once I've done that, I need to choose a lid color that I like. Um, and I think appropriate wedding color, an appropriate wedding color would be something in this range. This really pretty coppery brown color that does have more shimmer, and this is nice. And I'm going to apply it also with a flat brush, just a little bit smaller than the one I used previously. So I'm going to pat that on. Again, don't worry too much about blending at this point. Right now we are simply focused on depositing the color. So we're just putting it on there, patting it, patting it, patting it. And a lot of people ask me, why do you do your eyes first? And I love that question because before um, working for MAC, I did what most people do, is I would put on my foundation first. Well, a lot of times when you, especially when using brushes, which I do only recommend using brushes, don't use those little, what a foamy eye applicators, whatever, those are terrible and they're not good for blending. Use brushes, and you don't have to spend a ton on brushes. More about that later. But people ask me about doing the eyes first, and it's great because, especially if you're using any dark colors, a lot of times the eyeshadow tends to fall or dust down onto your orbital bone. And if you already have on your foundation concealer and you wipe that off, what else are you wiping off? The foundation concealer you just put on. So it's kind of a waste. So start with your eyes. That way, if you have to wipe off, you're not wiping anything other than just the eyeshadow off. Okay. So we've just deposited that color. I've gone a little bit above my crease. The reason being is that as I am maturing or growing um, old gracefully, my eyes are starting to sag, and which is very sad. But anyhow, they're starting to sag and I need a little bit of lift. So going above my crease is going to create the illusion 
of my eyes being lifted. So with a blending brush, which this is my absolute favorite brush by MAC, it is the 217. If I had to do an entire face using this brush alone, I could. It would take me a long time, but I could do it. But this is a great brush because it um, picks up deposits and blends all in one. It's really a fantastic brush. I'm going back into the same color I used on my lid, and I'm just going to go a little bit above my crease. I'm using light pressure, and you wanna take it up pretty high. Um, you don't want to go all the way up to your brow, but you want to take it up pretty close to it. There you go. You can still see my highlight color, and that's what's important. We don't want to just bring the brown all the way up and give our eyes absolutely no dimension. One thing um, that's good to remember is dark colors will recede something, and light colors will make something else more pronounced. That's why we use the light colors on our brow bone to make that come out, and we use the dark colors here to make our eyes more deep set. All right, so we blended that in. Time for our crease color and our outer corner color. So I'm taking the same brush, just a different one because it's clean and I'm dipping into a different color. And I'm going to go into this really pretty warm, reddish, rich brown, which is um, also a matte texture. You don't want to do all of the same textures on your eye, otherwise it just doesn't give it the dimension that your, your eye just needs more dimension. And so going with different textures will help achieve that. So I am simply going right here in the outer corner and blending it inwards and upwards just a smidge, just to give some more dimension to my eye. Again, dark colors recede, light colors highlight. And don't worry about all this mess. We'll take care of that in a minute. Um, a lot of people get nervous when they see the eyeshadow everywhere. I always tell my clients, if you happen to get up and have to go to the restroom or something in the middle of this, don't freak out if you see yourself in the mirror because with primers and just the beginning steps, it's gonna get ugly before it gets pretty. So anyway, so there. This is just really simple. And this is just a very basic, for me anyways, very basic everyday look. Just very neutral, very pretty, nothing flashy. Great for brides if they wanna stay pretty natural. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. We're just gonna stop with that color. We could smoke it out if we wanted to. There are so many more things we could do, but I'm just gonna keep it simple today. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is put on my eyeliner. My favorite eyeliner is by MAC, and it is um, Fluid Line. This is in Black Track. They have several different colors. Black is just my go-to color, I just love black. So I'm going to take my very tiny brush, dip it in, making sure that all of my um, hairs on my brush stay together. You wanna to keep your brush as compact as possible. You don't want the, anything to get frayed because then you're not gonna get a nice clean line. Okay, so for this, I'm just gonna go in and just start lining my eyes. I tend to start in the middle and then draw inwards and then back outwards. Everyone has their own way of doing this and there are some great ways on how to learn how to do a winged liner or a classic um, shape liner online, especially with these wonderful um, gel liners that are out here. Now I will say that um, a lot of people have jumped, a lot of different companies have jumped on the gel liner bandwagon I know um, Bobby Brown has had one out for a long time. Mac has had theirs for a, as long as I can remember. And, um, but now some of the drugstore brands carry it too, like L'Oreal and the like. And although I personally have not tried the drugstore brand ones, I have heard really great things about, about them. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you'd like to try it without making a super big investment, you should. Okay, let me get this eye. And just, you know, don't worry too much about getting this right the first time. I've been doing my eyeliner like this since high school. And it's just one of those things that after a while, once you get used to doing it, you just do it. It becomes second nature. But at first you're going to think, oh my word, I'm not going to be able to do this every day. But you will. You'll be able to. If this is the look you're going for and you just keep practicing, you'll get it. So we just did some basic liner there. And for the cat eye, 
I gotta tell you, I see a lot of ladies who do this and they've got this part great. Like it's straight, it's pretty, it's crisp, but then they get to the end here and they drag it down and then wing it out. You don't wanna really do that. It's not gonna give your eye a pretty shape. It's actually gonna bring your eye down rather than up and open. So the trick to this is right where your lower lid meets your upper lid, right before that, you wanna start swinging it upwards. So if you need to, I don't recommend pulling on your eye, but if you just need to hold it taut just a little bit, and then you just bring it upwards so that it's not going down and then up, and it looks kinda of silly or like a baby doll or something. It just looks kinda of dumb. Anyhow, so we've got that. One of my very favorite products is an eyelash primer. This is a MAC Prep and Prime. Oops, sorry, it's upside down. Um, but you can find a lot of these primers in drugstores. Um, you're just looking for um, the white, the white primer. And what I like to do is I like to put this on first, let it dry while I do the rest of my face, and then go back over it with my mascara. One little tip I wanna show you guys, a lot of times when you pull out your wand, all of the product is right here on the top of the wand. Some people just put it back in the bottle, some people wipe it off with a tissue, don't do that. Use it to your advantage. You're gonna take your wand, the tip of your wand, where all the product is, rub it on the ends of your lashes, so you're putting all the product there, and then you're gonna comb the product through with your wand. This way. Oops, as I poke myself in the eye. <laughs> See, I'm not perfect at all. Okay, there. And you can see the whites. The worst thing is though, is if I do this, and then for some reason I get distracted while doing my makeup, and I forget to put on my mascara and I'm going around with these white lashes. That looks absolutely ridiculous. It has happened to me more, more than once. Okay, so now it is time to do our face. We're gonna just leave my eyes alone for now. Keep it very natural. And I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but I have been hoarding this. This is a foundation that MAC used to make that I just absolutely love. It's called Hyper Real. They discontinued it and I have been hoarding bottles away since they discontinued it. I really love this stuff and I wish they would bring it back. Um, the reason I like it is because I have very dry skin and this has a lot of emollients in it which is going to cushion my dry skin. Not to mention that it has a beautiful iridescent glow to it which helps hide any sort of fine lines and wrinkles. It's just such a great thing. I don't know why they discontinued it. Um, as you see, I'm putting this on with my hands. Obviously on clients, I use a brush, duh. But on myself, I like it with my hands because it's just so much easier. I can feel exactly where I'm placing it. And this type of um, foundation just goes on better. It glides better with the warmth of the hands. So I've got that. Always make sure you blend down you don't want to look like you just stuck your face in a bowl of SpaghettiOs. I've seen that too many times. So you blend down and we're good. So very sheer coverage, very nice. This really is kind of close to a tinted moisturizer that might have a little bit of highlighting cream in it. But um, while I still have a few bottles, I'm going to use them to my advantage. All right, next. This is um, my favorite concealer. This is also by MAC. It's the Pro Long Wear Concealer. The color I'm using is NW20. And um, I love it. The only problem with this is the pump. I wish MAC would um, repackage it. Too much comes out. So I wind up either overloading my face or making or wasting a good bit. So again, with my fingers on myself, not on clients, but I um, use my fingers just because it's just easier. All right, so we're gonna go in. Most people where they want concealer the most is underneath their eyes. Using my ring fingers, because they are the weakest digit um, in your hand and we don't wanna be too rough with our eye area. So delicate. You're gonna go down into an upside down triangle. This is the best way to cover and highlight at the same time. So you're gonna go down and then back up into a triangle and then what I like to do is I like to use a little bit of the concealer that's left on my finger and wipe upwards, and that's gonna clean up the eyeshadow that fell. Okay, there we go. So two in one, you're concealing and you're cleaning. How efficient. Now, I'm gonna get a little bit more of this concealer because I was a little scared to use too much. And I like to go around my nostrils. I have redness around there. I don't know if it's hereditary, 
probably, or it's allergies or what it is, but this stuff works very well in covering dark circles, redness, it works on everything. Speaking of redness, I have a blemish, which earlier in the week I tested out that Pinterest thing where you could put an Advil liquid gel on a blemish and hide it, or take out the redness. Don't even bother, it didn't work. So I'm gonna dab that, and again with my fingers, just go in and gently blend it in. Once you're blending in to hide a blemish, you don't want to blend on top of the blemish because you're just wiping everything off. You're going to dab it on the blemish and then wipe all around. See, that covered up pretty well. Okay, again, this stuff is great um, because it's waterproof, which is wonderful, especially this time of year. And so here we go. Concealer and foundation done. I am a huge fan of highlighter. I love it. Um, one of my faves is the strobe liquid. I use this one in the summertime. MAC also makes strobe cream that I love in the wintertime um, when my skin is a little bit more dry. I just take a pump of this, actually a couple pumps, in my fingers again and go along my cheekbones, my forehead, down my nose, my cupid's bow, and my chin. And then I just blend it in. It's easy just to pat in or rub in. And this is going to help with the three-dimensional effect. We don't want to use so much matte color or just so many mono, monotonous or monochromatic, that's what I'm looking for, monochromatic colors to where we look two-dimensional. You still want your face to be pretty, to look natural, but still have dimension. I, could, I cannot express to you how many times I see so many girls with this super flat, flat makeup that is doing nothing for their face. I mean, it's, it's sad. I just wanna go up to them and screw them in the face with some strobe liquid. Okay, now once we have used the highlighter, which again, light colors protrude, we're going to do a little bit of contouring. I am not a huge, huge contour. I'm gonna leave that to all my dry queen sisters to do, but I do it a little bit. I do it because I like the shape that it gives my face, but I also like the warmth that it gives my face. So I am using a um, bronzer by MAC. This is my favorite. It is Refined Golden. It's a beautiful bronzy color, and as you can see, it's got some shimmer. It's not glittery, we don't want that. You don't want to look like you just rolled around in your craft supplies. So um, just keep it shiny and shimmery, but not glittery. All right, to do this, just remember the number three. It's so easy. You are going to start at the middle of your forehead, and you are going to do the number three. You don't have to do it all in one swoop like that. I was just trying to demonstrate. So what I do is I go through my forehead like this, down into my temple, and I just keep reapplying on my brush as needed. This is my favorite part right here though. Bam, look at that. I'll make that cheekbone pop. And then go down into your jawline, down into your neck and under the chin. And ladies, do not forget your ears, especially if you are gonna be wearing your hair back. So many ladies just focus on this beautifully tanned face, contoured face, nice warm face, and then you see these little pink ears sticking out, which doesn't make any kind of sense. So don't forget your ears. All right, so you can see that's a pretty big difference already. You can see how that, that contour really helped make the highlight stand out, and it kind of gave my cheekbone more of an edge. So let's do it on the other side, and obviously on the other side, you're gonna reverse the three into an E. I, don't, I know I didn't have to tell you all that. Okay, so down into your temple, and then bam, again with the cheekbones, that's what I'm talking about. I love me some cheekbones. Okay, and the ear, and then down into the jawline, and the neck. Don't forget your neck either. That's not good. That is not good at all if you forget your neck. Again, you don't want spaghetti o face. And then with what's left on the brush, I just touch up a little bit. Okay, so you can see it gave me warmth. I don't want to call it tan because you don't want to try to make your face look tan just using bronzer. You don't want to do that, but you do want to give it warmth. Okay, my next favorite thing, I just really am a huge fan of cream blush, um, of course, because I have dry skin. I love powdered blush as well. It's just for my skin, cream blush works better. And I picked this up the other day as well from NYX. It is their cream blush in rose petal. I'm gonna take my stippling brush and barely tap it in there. This stuff is highly pigmented. 
and I'm just gonna go on the apples of my cheeks first and then bring it back towards my temple. Do not go, y'all don't go straight 80s on me and pull it all the way up to your temple. I mean, this is not, we're not doing this little crazy, I've been sweating all day, let's get physical look. You wanna look natu natural in all of this. The best way for me to describe it is to do like a Nike swoosh. So you have the big part of the swoosh here and then you take it and you know just kind of make it taper out as you get closer to the temple. But don't go all up in that temple. It stresses me out. Okay, other one. And the nice thing about cream blush, it's a lot more forgiving than powder blush. If you put too much on of the cream blush, it's easy to take off. You just kind of use your fingers, just gently take it off. Okay, so our blush is on. Ta-da! Now, I don't know if y'all have noticed this, but last time I posted a picture on my business page, I showed y'all that I hacked up my eyebrow, which um, it's not looking so, so bad today. Wait, no, I can't remember which one it is now. That's a good thing. No, it was this one. I was trimming them using my little scissors and I had moisturizer on my hand, moisturizer on my face. I was all lubed up. And sadly, when I went to snip, Something slipped, shocker, and I cut a chunk out of my eyebrows. So, I am going to look at this as an opportunity to show you how to fill in brows, rather than like, oh my gosh, look what I did to myself. Okay, so I'm just going to comb my brows in the natural direction that they go. And one thing I noticed is people get really, really stressed out about brows. Okay, there's no sense in getting all stressed out about it. Um, brows are sisters, not twins. So some of the best advice I had ever gotten from my trainer at MAC. And it's so true. We want them to be perfect, but they're not going to be. So just get them as close as you can and be happy. Now, one thing, do not, please, please, I'm begging you, do not wax all your eyebrows off or pluck them or shave them or whatever and then just draw them in. Please do not do that. That stresses me out. I mean, really bad. It's like Sharpie, Sharpie brows. Don't do that. Um, and watch the shape of your brows. I mean, you don't want to have like so much right here in this itty bitty line right there. It looks like a paisley. You don't want that either. Try to keep it natural. Okay, so we're just going to fill in just at the bottom just to give it a nice shape. And then I've got to fill in definitely on the top where I looked, it looks like I took a hacksaw to him. There you go. Let's fill that in. And now, to me, I'm, this is all my opinion. Everything I'm doing is my opinion. Um, I don't like to take my brow pencil all the way here. Otherwise, it's very obvious that you have filled in your brows. Kind of, This part is always a little bit more sparse anyway, so just kind of leave that alone. And then when we brush it out, it'll all blend out and it'll look really nice. Okay, let me do the other one. If you have never had your eyebrows professionally shaped, I highly recommend it. Um, it's easy to keep up once they've done it professionally and it's a matter of choice whether you want to wax or thread or whatever but um, it's nice to go every once in a while and just have them shape your brows up and then you can just kind of keep them plucked in between which I really need to go get mine shaped it's been a while but that course I gotta let this sucker grow back in okay my brows, I, keep, I try to keep them very natural. A lot of my makeup artist friends love those very defined brows, and they look so good on them. They really do. I mean, I love them too. But as a stay-at-home mom who's always at the grocery store or changing a diaper or just running a mundane errand, having my face completely beat out with these eyebrows would be ridiculous. A waste of time because my kids can't appreciate it. And anyways, it just makes no sense. Back when I worked at the counter, okay. But now, nah. All right, my favorite, favorite mascara is Clinique's High Definition Mascara. The reason being is that it has the coolest applicator. On one side, it is just a regular mascara wand, and on the other side, it's a comb. So you're going to prevent clumps with both of these. So again, take the tip, rub it on the edges or ends of your lashes. Use the wand to wiggle that product through. And then use the comb to get any clumps out. Now, when you're putting on your mascara, please, ladies, make sure you are getting all the way back as close to your lid as possible. I can't stand seeing dusty lashes 
That's ladies who have put on their eyeshadow and then just gotten the tips of their lashes with their mascara and then I see all the eyeshadow dust on top. Now y'all, you know that doesn't look good. Okay, again, we're gonna do this. I didn't even put any product on there. I could tell as soon as I did it. There we go. It's so funny to me um, when I go in public restrooms and I see ladies who are touching up their makeup I love to watch the different faces people make as they look at themselves in the mirror or apply their makeup. It's hilarious. And now as I'm doing it for y'all, I mean, it's a little bit, you know, personal, but it's hysterical to watch people. So next time you're in public, in a public restroom, y'all pay attention to that. It's really funny. All right. And I'm just going to go a little bit on my lower lashes. There. Okay. On to lips. Um, for every day, I don't typically use a lip liner. Probably should, but I don't. But I do love it. And this is my favorite one of all time. This is Subculture by MAC. It's a great nude. I mean, it's just going to be one that you can wear under anything. So, what I'm going to do, I'm not, I, and I'm not here to tell you you want to look like Pamela Anderson and go outside your lips and try to make it, you know, the Angelina Jolie, you know, be stung lip or whatever. I, you know, I'm about keeping it the way God made you. So just go in here and just follow your natural lash. I mean, lash, natural lip line. And I know sometimes when I'm working on a client, my um, lip liner wants to skip. And usually that's just because the lips need a little bit of conditioning. So if you're having trouble getting this on, use a little chopstick. Burt's Bees, whatever, nothing fancy, just to condition your lips and then go on and it'll glide much better. What I like to do when I use the lip liner is fill the lip in all the way. That actually helps keep the color on all day long. And stretch those lips out. You don't want to like have all your lipstick and everything on and go to your event and smile and have all these little white cracks that you missed. So stretch them out. There we go. And yes, that feels very dry. But that's what it's supposed to do. So we've just got the lip liner on. Very natural. And um, my go-to lipstick, of course, by MAC, is Blankety. I love it because it's just a nice, almost a nude color. It looks great with a smoky eye, but it looks really good with something natural as well. I'm just going to apply it on top. You don't want to overload it. If you put on too much lipstick, it's going to bleed. And it's going to go everywhere and it's going to look bad. So don't do that. There we go. And so this is just a natural looking face. Just my everyday look. Um, and I will go ahead and just quickly apply the lashes. Y'all saw my tutorial yesterday. It's going to be the exact same lashes I used. But I'm just going to go a little bit faster. I've kind of gotten used to where I need to trim the brows and all that. So I'm getting my lashes ready now, of course, with my handy dandy duo. Never ever use the glue that comes with the lashes. It's always terrible. I mean, just terrible. So I'm going to put that on. And I'll just talk to y'all for a little while while the glue dries. I really appreciate y'all watching this video. I know I'm long-winded. I know. But I try to um, give y'all as much in one dose as I can, as many little nuggets of information as I can in one dose. So um, anyways, I would love to hear back from y'all. Um, let me know what kind of things you'd like to see. I mean, now that I've had a pretty good response from my first one where I did look like a troll, and y'all know it, I was out working in the yard. Y'all are sweet to say I wasn't, but I, I did. I looked terrible. But um, now that I've you know done that one, I feel pretty comfortable doing more. Um, and of course, of course, Pinterest is my best friend, so I go on there and find all these looks that I'm going to duplicate. Some of them are very natural, some of them are crazy, some of them I would wear in public, some of them I would not. But it's always fun just to try new things, and that's what I really hope y'all will do. Just remember, makeup is not a tattoo. If you do it and you mess it up or you hate it, it washes off. So just keep practicing. It's really fun. That's how you learn the most. Okay, so I'm ready to put this little guy on. Here we go. 
go. There we go. One. And let's do the other one. Snippy, snippy, bendy, bendy. If you hadn't watched the first video, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Basically, just bend and snip or trim them on the ends to make sure they're not sticking out too far this way or that way. Again, you want to put the duo on, the duo glue. Keep it a pretty thin line, but not so thin that they're not going to stick, but not too thick where it's going to take so long to dry. And again, that's one of the most important things about lashes is letting the glue dry before trying to put them on. Otherwise, it's going to slide all over the place. And these are the same ELF lashes that I used on the tutorial about lashes. It's just these little dollar lashes um, from Target. Um, don't use the glue inside of these. It's awful. Just get the duo. It'll last you a lot longer. And it is just so much better. And it's not expensive. It's like 4 or $5. <clears throat> So let's get this guy dry and um, then we'll place him on and then finish finish up by covering the lash band and then we'll be done. Alrighty. Another thing I want to mention is anytime you guys have questions <clears throat> about anything, any products or anything like that. Now I'm not saying I'm the end all be all. I don't know any, everything about every product. But I certainly will do my darndest to get you a, an answer to your question. So please feel free to contact me via Facebook on my business page, which is The Beauty Mark. And you will see a picture of my face. And I really love to answer questions. I actually learn a lot from answering questions because there are some questions that people ask me that I would have never thought of or products that I've never heard of and I just absolutely love finding out about new things and what better way to do it than have people mention it to me and let me research it. I love doing that. Okay, I'm just going to go back in just with a regular blending brush. This is a 224. It has nothing on it and I'm just going to make sure all of my shadow is nicely blended. And then I'm going to go in with some liquid eyeliner. This is not the stuff from China that I used yesterday. That stuff, by the way, yes, it's inexpensive. Yes, it's easy to get off of eBay. But it dries like with a crazy wet latex look, which not my thing. So that will not be being pulled out again. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the lash band with liquid liner. And that just hides the lash band. So it kind of lets the false lashes be your little secret where people don't know that they're on there. And it just helps also define that really pretty winged liner. One. You like? And here is the other one. Let's get that one done. There. And lastly, I'm going to take a little bit of mascara, just like I used the Maybelline Great Lash, oldie but a goodie, and I'm going to comb my natural lashes into the false lashes because I don't want it to look like I have two sets of lashes, which is easy to do. Once I have that on there and it's still wet, I'm going to pinch the lashes together. This little guy wants to come up. There we go. Okay. And that's it. Very easy. I know this was long because I had a lot of explaining to do, but all in all in the mornings to do this look, it take, I don't put false lashes on every morning. So minus the false lashes, it takes me about 15 minutes. So it's something very easy, easy to do. Um, just practice. The more you practice, the faster you are and the better it looks. So thank you all again for watching. Please feel free to ask me any questions and um, I will talk to you all soon. God bless.